So I read something pretty interesting recently, and apparently every patient with CKD who's over the age of 50 should be immediately started on a statin regardless of their LDL or if they've had a lipid panel drawn before. This is from the Katie Go uh, guidelines from 2013. So these are actually pretty old guidelines. So here they say the Katie Go committee does not use specific LDLC targets and focuses on statin therapy for managing dyslipidemia. They recommend that all patients greater than 50 years with CKD, with the exception of those on chronic dialysis, be treated with a statin. In this same age group, in more advanced stages of CKD, stage 3 through 5, treatment with combination statin plus azetamide is recommended. Think about all the patients that you see in the hospital with CKD, particularly CKD3, I think, is kind of where we see most commonly. But apparently, based off this recommendation from 2013, these patients should be not only on statin, but also azetamide. And that's never seen. I, I never see patients on both a statin and azetamide. And then even for patients with CKD1 and 2, they are also supposed to be on a statin regardless of their lipid panel if their, if their age is greater than 50. By the way, I didn't actually know what CKD1 was. I was like, isn't that GFR greater than 90? So do we all have CKD1 or something? But uh, apparently CKD1 is when you have GFR greater than 90, but you have proteinuria. So even in these patients with a normal renal function, but just signs of proteinuria, they should be on a statin. <clears throat> this article is from the American College of Cardiology, and they're basically summarizing the KDGO recommendations from 2013. And here they say that CKD defined by at least three months of impaired kidney function or albuminuria has been showed in multiple studies to be associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. In a meta-analysis of over 1.4 million people, there was a linear increase in cardiovascular mortality seen with decreased increasing estimated GFR below a threshold of eGFR of 75, with mortality rates twice as high in stage 3 CKD and three times as high in stage 4 CKD. Patients with CKD have also been shown to have similar rates of myocardial infarction or coronary heart disease compared to those with diabetes, which is why it is considered a coronary heart disease equivalent by many thought leaders. Dyslipidemia is common but not ubiquitous in CKD based on multiple factors including EGFR, the presence of diabetes and other comorbidities, albuminuria severity, nutritional status, and use of other medications. Even though patients with CKD should be considered as part of the highest risk group for cardiovascular disease, these patients are often underdiagnosed and undertreated with cholesterol-lowering agents. Part of the issue may be the lack of management guidelines for dyslipidemia in CKD patients from national and international groups, including the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association. Kind of funny that they're calling themselves out for not having a guideline on this. And this has been around since 2013, so why haven't they made a guideline for this, to be honest? I'm not totally sure. So the first set of the KDGO guidelines, and I actually went through this. You can find the whole guidelines uh, if you look up the t uh, 2013 KDGO guidelines um, for CKD. But basically, all patients with newly diagnosed CKD should get a baseline lipid panel. But regardless of that baseline lipid panel, they should be initiated on a statin or a statin plus azetamide. And then the KDGO committee actually recommends not obtaining... Uh, they do not recommend follow-up measurement of lipid levels, except in special cases uh, where management would be affected because, again, their uh, goals of starting a statin on the, in these patients is irregardless from what this lipid panel shows. So there's no reason to obtain follow-up lipid panels in these patients. They're just still going to recommend giving them a statin. Uh, the only reason they really check that baseline lipid panel is to check if there's like familial hypercholesterolemia or familial hypertriglyceridemia to treat those causes instead. So anyways, again, we get to the part where they say that that all adults greater than 50 years with CKD should be treated with a statin and CKD three through five should be treated with statin and azetamide. So I'm curious to see if their argument here is going to convince you to change your practice so that every patient that comes in with CKD, you're going to immediately start them on a statin. And if they have CKD three through five, you're going to start them on statin plus azetamide. And any nephrologists who are watching this video, please let me know what you think. Uh, should I be starting statin plus azetamide in all these patients uh, with CKD three? Because I see them all the time in the hospital and they're never on azetamibe. I never see anybody on azetamibe, to be honest. So I'm very interested to hear what the nephrologist and everybody else thinks, uh, because apparently, based on the Katie Go guidelines, we should be starting them on azetamibe. The evidence behind these recommendations is partly based on the Alberta cohort of over 1 million people followed for more than four years, examining the rates of coronary death or non-fatal MI. The recommendation for a statin azetamide combination comes from the study of heart and renal protection, or the SHARP trial. This study randomized 9,270 patients greater than 40 years old with CKD to simvastatin 20 mg plus azetamide 10 mg daily, regardless of baseline LDLC levels, 
Patients were eligible if they had more than one creatinine measurement of 1.7 milligrams per deciliter in men or greater than 1.5 milligrams per deciliter in women. Um, again, I, I looked up this trial. Apparently, it was done in 2010, but really, uh, it kind of sucks that they used uh, creatinine as a cutoff because I really feel like we should be using GFR as a cutoff for all these trials uh, You know, nowadays because creatinine, we all know, is just such an inaccurate measure of what they're you know, renal function is. Honestly, you know, on that BMP where we always put creatinine, honestly, we should just have a change like in the culture and just start putting the GFR in my opinion. That just seems so much more useful. But anyways, the primary outcome of combined MI, coronary death, stroke, or arterial revascularization was reduced by 17% in the treatment group with a mean 32% mean reduction in LDLC uh, levels. So 17% may not sound like that much, but look at the p-value of 0 0.0021. So this is pretty strong level of evidence. And it was a primary outcome of pretty severe outcomes. MI, coronary death, stroke, or arterial revascularization. This isn't a, oh, 17% of the patients had like a 30% reduction in their LDL. This is 17% of the patients avoided... Um, you know, 17% reduction in the amount of MI or death or stroke. These are actually like pretty significant outcomes, right? This came at the expense of a minor risk of excess myopathy, 0.2% in the treatment group versus 0.1% in the placebo group. That's almost negligible. Um, without any increased risk of hepatitis, gallstones, or excess death from non-vascular causes. In adults aged 18 through 49 years old with CKD, but not treated with chronic dialysis, the KDGO group suggests statin treatment only for people with one of the following, known coronary disease, diabetes, prior ischemic stroke, or an ASCVD risk score of greater than 10%. Uh, and then they say people with CKD are at higher risk of side effects because of the risk of this toxicity. They recommend statin dosing based on regimens that have been studied. Um, mainly, they're focusing on moderate intensity statins such as atorvastatin 20 and rosuvastatin 10. And then finally, uh, comparing the KDGO recommendations from 2013... Uh, the ACC actually brought up the guidelines that are recommended from the NLA, the National Lipid Association, which for some reason just really reminds me of the NRA, the National Rifle Association. Um, and uh, I was just thinking, man, we should really increase the funding. I wish the lobby for the NLA was stronger like the NRA because maybe we could get some better control of everybody's hyperlipidemia over here. Um, but anyways, the NLA 2015 guidelines recommend a stepwise approach to risk management. Basically, they said to still check the ASCVD risk first, um, but they're basically saying that CKD patients are still high risk. Uh, the ACC AHA guidelines, uh, on the other hand, do not specifically address CKD. They use uh, what we're all kind of familiar with. So if they have clinical ASCVD, LDL greater than 190 or diabetes, or if they have a risk score of greater than 5%. I always like to pull up this chart right here uh, because it shows you if you're less than 5% risk uh, on your ASCVD and you're in this category, age 40 to 75 with LDL 70 to 190, then you just emphasize lifestyle reduction. Uh, 5 to 7.5%, you can consider a moderate intensity statin. And then if you're greater than 7.5%, you should definitely be starting on at least a moderate intensity statin. In adults with dialysis-dependent CKD, KDGO recommends avoiding initiation of statins or statin ezetinamibe combinations. This is something that I've, um, you know, I learned during residency is that the evidence for initiating statins in patients with dialysis is fairly poor. It doesn't really show improved outcomes. So if somebody is not on a statin and they got CKD and their LDL is super high or something, really the evidence for actually starting them on statin is pretty poor. That being said, if they are already on a statin, it's totally fine to continue it. Um, there is no recommendation to stop therapy in dialysis patients who are already receiving statins or statin ezetimibe combinations. These recommendations are based on several trials, including the 4D, the Di Dutch Diabetes Dialyze trial, or the Aurora, a study to evaluate the use of rosuvastatin, rosuvastatin in subjects on regular hemodialysis, <laughs> very creative names, and a subgroup analysis of SHARP. In all three trials looking at treating hemodialysis patients with statins or statin plus ezetimibe versus placebo, the primary outcome of cardiovascular death, MI, or stroke was not different between the treatment and placebo arms. When taken together, despite the high CVD risk of dialysis patients, there seems to be at best an uncertain benefit of statins in this population. However, another thing that I did not know, but did you know that 
every single patient with a kidney transplant should be on a statin regardless of if they have CKD or not. So this is the only guideline to address kidney transplant, but the KDGO recommends treating all kidney transplant recipients with a statin regardless of age. This recommendation is based mainly on the alert or the assessment of LESCAL in renal transplantation. What is LESCAL? Uh, which randomized 2,102 renal transplant patients aged 30 to 75 with baseline total cholesterol 156 to 1. Uh, 156, 51 milligrams, I don't know what that means, to fluvastatin 40 milligrams per day or placebo. After two years, this was increased to 80 milligrams per day, and they were followed for five years. While the primary endpoint of cardiac death, non-fatal MI, and coronary intervention was not significantly different between two groups, fluvastatin reduced the risk of cardiac death by 38% with a p-value of 0.03. Additional support for treating all kidney transplant patients with statins comes from the high rates of CVD death or MI seen in alert. So this is something that I didn't know before because I feel like I see a lot of young renal transplant patients who don't seem to be on a statin. Uh, and maybe I'm remembering wrong because probably a lot of them were on statins. But this is definitely another opportunity where we could get people on statins where it's recommended um, per the guidelines and per some of these trials. You know, if you see a renal transplant patient, uh, get them started on a statin if they're not already. And if you see a patient with CKD3, get them at least started on a statin. And per the guidelines and per whatever the nephrologists are going to comment below, consider getting them on a zetamibe as well. Uh, these are all very, very easy opportunities for us to improve the lipid profiles and you know the risk uh, and modify the risk factors for these patients uh, to prevent serious adverse outcomes. So finally, we get into this uh, table that they did, uh, a comparison of the guidelines recommended for lipid management among patients with CKD on dialysis or renal transplant patients. So again, we've got Katie Go. Any adult greater than 50 with CKD 1 to 2 should be on statin. 3 to 5, not on dialysis, should be on statin plus azetamibe or just a statin. Adults less than age 50 with known coronary disease, diabetes, prior ischemic stroke, or ASCVD risk of greater than 10% should be on a statin. Adults with dialysis uh, do not initiate statins, but can be continued if already receiving at the time of dialysis. And then any adult kidney transplant recipient with CKD 1 through 5 should be on a statin. That's contrasted with the 2013 ACC AHA guidelines, which I think most of us are familiar with, more familiar with. But any clinical ASCVD should be on a high-intensity statin. Adults with LDL greater than 190, high-intensity statin. 40 to 75 um, years old and LDL 70 to 190 should be started if their ASCVD risk is greater than 7.5%. If they have dialysis-dependent CKD, no recommendations, and then if they have a risk greater than 7.5% with no diabetes, then they uh, recommend a moderate or high-intensity statin. Per the National Lipid Association, uh, adults with advanced CKD, uh, 3 to 4, should be treated to an LDL goal of less than 100. And then they say ASCVD and diabetes should be treated. 0 to 1, uh, look, looks like multiple ASCVD risk factors. They just say consider starting therapy. And they have kind of lower targets depending on how many risk factors they have. And then again, no recommendation for adults with C CKD stage 5 or hemodialysis. All right, so in summary... Apparently, every single patient over the age of 50 with CKD should be on a statin. And if they're CKD 3 through 5, we should even consider starting them on statin and azetamibe. If they are on dialysis, there is no recommendation to start a new initiation of statin, but they can stay on previous, previously prescribed statins if they're already on them. And then all kidney transplant patients or recipients should be on a statin regardless of their CKD level, uh, even if they have just CKD1 uh, because of their risk and that trial that showed improved uh, cardiovascular outcomes. Anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed that video. I think a lot of interesting points here. Would love to hear your comments down below. Are you going to start statins and azetamibe on every single patient? Nephrologist, tell me what you think. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching and peace.